Hey guys, Elise here for another story reading. Today I'll be reading you guys Emmanuel's Story, the true story of Emmanuel Yosufa Yeboa by Lori Ann Thompson. This story is super cool because it's about the true story of a boy who really has to overcome adversity in his physicality and he goes on to do amazing things in the name of his mother. I'd really like for you guys to read this, so stick around, it'll be super cool. Bye. Emmanuel's Dream, the story of Emmanuel Osufa Yeboa, written by Lori Ann Thompson, illustrated by Sean Qualls. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light, two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry, two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Most people thought he would be useless, or worse, a curse. His father left never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort, and sh she named her first child Emmanuel, meaning God with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back two miles each way on one leg by himself. At first, nobody would play with him, so Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course he would share it, if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crutches, his grandmother had found for him and kicked the ball with his good left foot, Emmanuel earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Goodwin pushed him so fast he, so he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell, hard. But finally, he rode. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market, and Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. When Emmanuel wasn't selling drinks, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned his money and sent it home. One morning, when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, Be respectful, take care of your family, don't ever beg, and don't give up. By the next morning, Emmanuel's beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, no one would help him. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana was impossible. Then, Emmanuel wrote to a Challenged Athletes Foundation, all the way in San Diego, California. They sent him a bike, plus a helmet, 
shorts, socks, and gloves. Emmanuel started training for the long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. He went door to door asking for additional support. Finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friend. The Emmanuel, then Emmanuel tied his right leg to the bike's frame, jammed his left foot in a flip-flop attached to the pedal, and rode. Emmanuel pedaled through the bustling city of Accra. He pedaled through rainforests, over rolling hills, and across wide, muddy rivers. He pedaled past Adun forests and plantations farms, and through the market city of Kumosi. He pedaled as trucks roared past on the narrow highways, and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into the ancient city of Tamale. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, proudly wearing the colors of its flag, on a shirt printed with the words, the Pozo, or the disabled people. Along the way, Emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without, the, to poor farmer workers and wealthy landloaders, to region to religious leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. The farther Emmanuel rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered, able-bodied adults ran or rode along with him. People with disabilities left their homes and came outside, some for the very first time. The young man, once thought as of as cursed, was becoming a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But Emmanuel's success goes even further than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things, and one person is enough to change the world. The End this is a quote by Emmanuel Osufusa Yeboah. In this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. Well, that's it for this book. I hope you guys enjoyed. And my challenge to you guys is to think of one area in your life that you could really improve and work at to do so. Do this and think about what inspires you and maybe write it down or draw a picture or tell someone else about it. Well, I hope you liked this video. Happy reading and check out the rest of the stuff we have on our channel. Bye. See you next time.